sad sermons for stubborn saints. Jeremiah chapters 2 through 6. Jeremiah was given one of the most difficult ministries ever entrusted to a prophet by God. He had to deliver an undesirable and unpopular message. Jeremiah was arguably the most tender-hearted of the prophets, but he wasn't afraid to say what he thought. Behind the scenes, we witness him sobbing, heartbroken at the people's misdeeds and the impending judgment. Number 1. The Sins Jeremiah describes the people and their misdeeds. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2 Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness in a land not sown. First, he refers to them as an unfaithful wife. It was like a honeymoon when Israel, the people of God, fell in love with the Lord in the beginning. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 5 Thus says the Lord, What injustice have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me, have followed idols, and have become idolaters? But something caused a breach in the relationship. Of course, the problem wasn't what God had done, but what the people had done. They had fallen out of love with the Lord. God said, I remember you. The people may have forgotten God, but He hadn't forgotten them. The next picture is also rather vivid. God calls them broken cisterns. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hew in themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. God compares the people to individuals who have abandoned a clear, fresh, pure stream of fountain water in favor of their own miserable water vessels. Rainwater was collected in cisterns back then. However, their cisterns tended to leak. The water was salty and unpleasant to drink. What type of individual would abandon a pure, cold stream of fountain water for a muddy hole? That is exactly what God's people did when they walked away from God and toward idols. Verse 21 presents another picture. Israel is frequently compared to a vine in the Old Testament. But here, even though God had planted you a noble vine, a seed of highest quality, they had become a degenerate plant of an alien vine. You will remember what Jesus said in John chapter 15 verse 1. I am the true vine. Israel failed to be God's vine the way they should have been, but Jesus was the true vine. The picture here is that God had given his people great privileges and blessings, but they were squandering them all by being unfaithful, wallowing in mud, and withering like a dead vine. How often do people in our world try to enjoy pleasures that are nothing more than wallowing in sin? Number 2. The Summons Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 1 They say, If a man divorces his wife and she goes from him and becomes another man's, may he return to her again. Would not that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the harlot with many lovers, yet return to me, says the Lord. God called on the people to return to him. This is God's appeal throughout this section. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3 For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and do not sow among thorns. Every day God calls us, his people to return to him. How do we get back? We break up the fallow ground and confess our sins. We allow the Holy Spirit to work the plow of conviction in our hearts, and we repent of the sins that prevent the word from entering the heart. Jeremiah chapter 5 describes the agony of captivity. The nation was on its way to captivity and Jeremiah had to warn the people that the Babylonians were on their way. 
Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 1. The justice of God's judgment run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. See now and know. And seek in her open places if you can find a man. If there is anyone who executes judgment, who seeks the truth, and I will pardon her. Jeremiah was sent by God on a mission to find just one honest person in Jerusalem. God said he would pardon the nation if he could only find one. This is similar to Abraham and the city of Sodom. God had promised Abraham that he would punish Sodom for its heinous sinfulness. Abraham requested that the Lord spare the city if he could find ten righteous people. He promised to do so, according to the Lord. However, ten righteous people were not found in the entire city. Genesis chapter 18 verses 22 to 33 Then the men turned away from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were fifty righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who am but dust and ashes have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the fifty righteous. Would you destroy all of the city for lack of five? So he said, If I find there forty-five, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose there should be forty found there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of forty. Then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty should be found there. So he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Indeed now, I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty should be found there. So he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of twenty. Then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but once more. Suppose ten should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. This demonstrates the power of one. There might have been one righteous person who could have saved Jerusalem, but there wasn't even one. So how about you? Could you be the only good person in your community? It is challenging, but God values that one person. Number three, the sentence. Jeremiah's sermons were pointed and powerful, and he used several vivid images to emphasize God's message. Lusty stallions. This verse exclaims, they were like well-fed lusty stallions. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. Can you imagine Jeremiah preaching that? He said, basically, you were living like animals. Wind. This is in reference to false prophets. Their words are nothing more than wind that blows through and then passes. Every generation has the true and the false, the true preacher and the false preacher. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. And the prophets become wind, for the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done to them. Therefore thus says the Lord God of hosts, Because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire, and this people wood, and it shall devour them. According to Jeremiah, the false prophets are a bunch of morons who will be punished. Fire I will make my words in your mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them, God told Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah's sermon was like fire on kindling wood. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 1. O you children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee from the midst of Jerusalem. Blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and set up a signal fire in Bethacharim, for disaster appears out of the north and great destruction. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 17 to 30. Also, I said, watch men over you, saying, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not listen. Therefore hear, you nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth. Behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words nor my law, but rejected it. For what purpose to me comes frankincense from Sheba, and sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet to me. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall on them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people comes from the north country, and a great nation will be raised from the farthest parts of the earth. They will lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roars like the sea, and they ride on horses, as men of war set in array against you, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the report of it. Our hands grow feeble. Anguish has taken hold of us pain as a woman in labor. Do not go out into the field, nor walk by the way. Because of the sword of the enemy, fear is on every side. O oh, daughter of my people, dress in sackcloth and roll about in ashes. Make mourning as for an only son most bitter lamentation, for the plunder will suddenly come upon us. I have set you as an assayer and a fortress among my people, that you may know and test their way. They are all stubborn rebels walking as slanderers. They are bronze and iron. They are all corruptors. The bellows blow fiercely. The lead is consumed by the fire. The smelter refines in vain, for the wicked are not drawn off. People will call them rejected silver, because the Lord has rejected them. The Babylonian invasion and captivity are discussed in chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 6 For thus has the Lord of hosts said, Cut down trees and build a mound against Jerusalem. This is the city to be punished. She is full of oppression in her midst. God even appeared to be commanding the Babylonian army. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 10 To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Indeed, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot give heed. Behold, the word of the Lord is a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Why? Because his word had been rejected by the people. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 15 Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall at the time I punish them. They shall be cast down, says the Lord. They were also not embarrassed when they had committed abomination. Punishment is unavoidable. God is a holy God, while tender and forgiving also judges sin. We must be aware of this reality and choose the path He has so graciously prepared for us, salvation through His Son. Number 4. The Solution Thus says the Lord, Stand in the ways and seek, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. Ask for directions to the old road, the tried and true road, and then take it as a good paraphrase. 
Find the right path for your souls. I want to tell our young people that there is a lot of modern stuff going on, but God has some tried and true paths. This Jesus road is a good one. It may be an old path that appears to be out of date. Many people may regard it as antiquated, but it's a good way, and if you follow it, you'll find peace for your soul.